Hi, I'm Tom Peters. I'm standing outside a grocery store, not part of a big supermarket chain, just a one-store operation in one of the most competitive regions in the grocery industry. In fact, within just a 15-mile radius of here, there's a higher concentration of grocery stores than in any other market in the country. But in spite of that, 400,000 people will drive past the competition and shop here every month. Where am I? I'm at Stu Leonard's in Norwalk, Connecticut, the largest dairy store in the world. A shopping expanse of 100,000 square feet, staffed by over 600 employees. You see, this isn't your ordinary grocery store. Stu Leonard's carries only 800 items, as opposed to the 15,000 items most grocery stores carry. But that's where the comparison stops. This year, 1% of the pistachio nuts consumed in the entire United States will be purchased right here. More Purdue chickens are sold here than in any other single food store in the United States. In one week, shoppers will spend $200,000 here in the largest in-store bakery in the country. You're probably saying, wow, what is Stu Leonard's secret? How does one guy with only one store manage to sell so much and keep his customers coming back in droves week after week after week? Well, fortunately, the cat's out of the bag. Stu Leonard's success story is no longer a secret, and frankly, it never really has been. You see, customer satisfaction, customer loyalty, and market position are not just terms in some strategic planning outline around here, but a way of life every day, from the managers to the cashiers running the checkout lines. Every one of Stu's customers, in fact, are not just another 50 or 100 bucks on the daily revenue printout. They look at it in a different way. Each customer represents $50,000 walking into this store. That's what Stu expects the average shopper to spend on groceries in 10 years. With that much at stake, and in such an intensely competitive marketplace, you can see why the customer has quite a high value. So high, in fact, that Stu had it carved in five tons of granite. The customer is always right. About two weeks after we opened the store, I was standing at the front door you know, and shaking hands and thanking people for coming, you know, and they were coming in the store now. And I was so happy. And all of a sudden, this customer walks in and she hands me a half gallon of eggnog. And she said, this is sour. And I looked at the eggnog and I, I opened it up and I smelled it. And I even tasted a little bit of it. And I said to her, immortal words, you're wrong. It's not sour. In fact, it might be a little spicy but it's not sour. And she looked at me and she got so mad. I remember the veins came out of her neck and she said to me, I want my money back. And I reached in my pocket and the eggnog was 95 cents and I gave her a dollar bill. And she, she just took the dollar bill and she started out the store and she looked back at me and she said, I'm never coming back in this store again. And I stood there like dumbfounded. I said, what happened? You know, I said, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I said, gee, I just gave her her money back. I just paid the price of winning this customer back. But yet I lost her and she's never coming back in the store. Here I have everything in the world invested in this business. I'm advertising, I'm doing everything, trying to get the customers here. And then I'm driving them away by telling them they're wrong. So that night I did some thinking and I decided that the customer can never be wrong. The customer is always right. And I said, what I need, not only to remind me, but to remind all my people, and to remind the customer that they're always right. I need a symbol. I need something that I could look at every day. And it said, our policy. Rule one, the customer is always right. Rule two, if the customer is ever wrong, reread rule one. That that did a, a, an amazing thing because all of a sudden the customers started to smile when they saw it. Nobody is telling them they're right anymore. You know, most people you go in a store, and eh, eh, the customer's wrong. But now when they come in here, they start to smile. Our people on the way to work, 
They saw, see that every day, they smile, I smile. So it became a symbol, and very often you need things like that. And I would say that the customer is always right is a lesson that I'm never gonna forget if I live to be 100. As soon as you pass through the doors of Stu Leonard's dairy, the sights, sounds, and smells paint an amusement park atmosphere. Stu Leonard's has been called the Disneyland of grocery stores. There are animated characters belting out Stu Leonard melodies, a life-size, lovable cow, and huge displays lit up with customer sayings. Stu Leonard has created a magical, unusual shopping experience for the entire family. It looks like a lot of fluff, but behind all of the fun is a serious business success story. Before we talk about the dedicated workers, the innovative systems, and the enthusiastic leadership that makes this place so special, let's start this story with what all these elements are designed to accomplish, satisfying the customer. The customer is number one, and that is why you're here. And it's fantastic. The prices are good. And it's fresh. That, that's really what I love about it. They're very courteous, prompt service, you have no problems. As a matter of fact, I was impressed with the efficiency of getting through the checkout. Oh. Uh, very crowded, but a lot of fun. Fabulous. Wonderful. Everyone's always smiling, no matter what you ask them, they're, they'll run all over the store to get something for you. It's wow. Wow. <laughs> Definitely wow. <laughs> I just like um, coming in, and there's ice cream, and there's a whole bunch of ice activity always. And the kids love it. I took her here because we were, we were just um, looking at each other, kind of staring. I said, well, let's go have some fun. Let's go do better. <laughs> That's the truth. Executive Vice President for Operations, Frank Guthman, is sensitive to the needs of the customers. Because we found out many years ago that if we can meet the customer's need, give her what she wants, she'll come back again and again and again. And our whole purpose here is to solve that mundane shopping trip and make it a pleasant experience. And if you don't have happy customers... The mandate here is simple. Happy customers will translate to repeat customers. Jill Tavello is Vice President of Human Resources. But if you make a person's um, visit through the store, any store, any business, worthwhile, and make them say, wow, am I glad I went to that place. They really, they really made me happy. They went out of their way for me. They made me feel that the money I spent was worthwhile. They didn't rip me off. They gave me a quality product. I really feel good about where I just shopped. They're going to be back again. To see the people working here smile. The president of the dairy, Stu Leonard Jr., sets the tone for the entire operation. I'm proud to work at a place that has uh, its customers and, and team members smiling. We do measure certain things, such as sales per hour. Um, uh, Steve we, we Guthman is executive uh, vice president for finance uh, at Stu Leonard like Dairy. To of course, but we would never put our front end manager into a position of cutting back on cashiers in order to make a budget. We would much rather solve that problem with higher volume, meaning more cashiers, more happy customers. They will come back again. They don't like to stand in line. No one likes to shop anyway and therefore the job of making shopping just a tiny bit more pleasant is highly gratifying and it makes them come back. All the time we hear your cashiers are so nice. They thank me by name. They're nice to my kids. They smile. They're courteous. I've never had a rude one. You know, that means a lot because, you know, the customer spends the most time with a cashier in the store. And so it makes me feel proud to know that our cashiers are given that little extra effort. Um, Stu Leonard's has assembled a team of motivated and dedicated cashiers at the checkout. It's how you treat the customers, then that's how the customers treat you back. Well, customers have come to the line and they've noticed they've forgotten something. So instead of telling them, well, forget it, you, you can't keep other people waiting, we get on the phone, we call the department, we ask the people to bring whatever it is that they've forgotten up here and ring it up and then they have it. And they're very happy for you taking the time to do that for them. Other stores wouldn't do that. They just shoo you out. That's it. Forget it. Come get it later. But we do that for them to make them happy. Whatever my customer asks me for, that's what I give. If they want two things in one bag, I give it. Because Stu's rule is the customer's always right. And it's easier that way for me. And it's easier to get along with the customers that way, for me anyway. You know, in the back of the store... Getting through the checkout at the dairy like is efficient and, and friendly for cashiers and customers. Mike Hughes is director of cashiers. 
Uh, most important thing for me to do would be to have the cashiers relate to the customers the way I'd want them to relate to me so that I come back and shop. The end goal for me is to have the customers leave the front end happy. The manager of customer service, Helen Telesco, hears from customers in a different way. Some days, I mean, I'm amazed. It could be 100, 200 suggestions in the suggestion box. We scoop it into a Stu Leonard bag, and we then proceed to sort them. And we type them up for the managers of all those departments to, to read, and then they can act on them. Please stock more vanilla yogurt. You're currently out. It's my job to read these things. You know, this keeps your pulse on the business when you read what the customers write. You better react to these right away. Our customers tell us what our problems are, and we solve them ASAP. We never want to hear about how great we are. We want to hear about the little things that are wrong. What can we do about them? The customer that complains is our best friend. And we have a file that says best friends. And those are the customers that come to the desk and complain. So it gives us the opportunity to improve. You know, a lot of times you just don't listen because you're so busy doing everything and you don't sit down and say to a customer, what do, you, what do you think you're shopping here? And that's what I love to do. I love to do the focus groups. They're a ball. The thing that we like to do here is have everybody tell us what they don't like about shopping at Stu Leonard's. You could, to make us feel good, mix a couple of good things in that might happen. But uh, the main thing is we want to hear really what you don't like because we only carry 800 items, and I know everybody shops at other food stores. The main thing we want to do is find out if you're seeing something at other stores that you like, tell us about it, because that's something we could improve here, and that's mainly the, the reason for getting together this morning. The one thing that I've noticed that I absolutely hate are those gigantic carts. And everybody I've talked to, uh, you know, more people than not, don't like them. They're just too unwieldy. You've got to get some of the small ones back again. Why can't you have some of those little baskets that people come in and you have to buy two or three items and yeah. carry it right around like they have in the Grand Union and the chain store? How many people think we should get some of those smaller green carts back? Yeah. Who? Who? Let's hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Huh? Seven. Because, you know, I come here once a week. I can't come more than that. And I rather to buy lots of stuff. So yeah. one card, I mean, even I, sometimes I use two cards. Uh, we just got a lot of, uh, lot of good suggestions. I just read one this morning from a customer. She wrote, uh, uh, she said, get those big new gold aircraft carriers out of your store. <laughs> 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 She no, called them aircraft. Don't get rid of them all together. No, because for those of us with children, you really need the big ones. Uh, okay. I think you should have some big ones, but some smaller ones also. What do you think, Cush? There should be some small sizes of things, <laughs> even on the chop meat. Instead of having it always be a pound, a pound, a quarter, a pound and a half, throw in three quarters of a pound or a half a pound package for somebody who wants to buy that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather pay no, more for it no. and be able to buy less. Because if you're a senior citizen and you leave alone, you're going to be eating the same you. thing all week. Oh, you hear some great ideas from the customer, but, you know, you can't do them all. You know, you got to run a business, and you also have to listen to the customer. And one of the things is that if you go talk to shopping cart manufacturers, they will tell you the bigger carts mean bigger sales, because people can put more food into them. So over the years, we've been upgrading our carts, and we just are so proud. We just put the most beautiful carts in our store, brand new. You know, they no bent wheels. They just are beautiful. Obviously, the customers are telling us something. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to not only have our big, beautiful carts, but we're going to also go to a small, smaller cart as well and have two carts. It's amazing how smart the people are who work in any company, how smart the customers are to shop in any store or any business. The problem is, is that I think management just doesn't tap those ideas enough. And so one of my main jobs at the, at the store here is I have to create the environment where it's encouraged for people to go and say to their team members working with them, hey, how can we do this better? What's some good ideas? The One Idea Club is a, a 
something that just, I don't even know how it got originated, but we constantly pop in the van and we head, oh, we heard this company does something really neat, or we heard this supermarket's opening and this is their grand opening, let's go look at it, or we heard that there's a job fair somewhere and employment, something's happening with people or anything, and we'll just hop in the van and we'll drive there. Just take four or five people right, out, right away, um, away from their jobs that they're doing here, we hop in the van and off we go. And then on the way back, we'll talk about what we learned and how we're going to implement what we learned, what we're going to do about it, and how we can change to make Stew Lounge a better place. Boy, you know, this ad here about the, the way they set it up with the casting call and everything, right. that was really good, don't you think? And you know what else I like about this? They asked you to call in for an appointment, so your yes. interviews weren't well, rushed. Well, I really yeah. like the idea of the way they welcome you um, when you're coming to apply for a job, yes. and they, they're exciting? really nice. One of the things that I would love that you did when you came back is what? maybe take out an ad like this in the paper for our open house next mm -hmm. week. I think it would be really good and yeah. helpful to us. And um, as far as trying new ideas here, uh, Stewie says, I'd rather that you try 100 ideas, have 99 of them fail, and have one of them work, but try it. Because, you know, new ideas is what the store is made of. Every day we're moving displays around, we're trying new things, where maybe someone will come up with a new way to recognize people or anything. We'll say, let's try it. And we do. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. As a business, you can't get much closer to the customer than bringing them right into your office like in a customer focus group, or reading their criticisms directly from a suggestion box on a daily basis. And they listen to this stuff. They not only listen to it, they act on it. The One Idea Bus tells the story. Every single person who works here is encouraged to be a leader, an idea person, hired not for any particular skill, but for attitude. Someone who will contribute to the team and be an asset. And in fact, Stu is expanding into an enormous store in Danbury, Connecticut, where the need to hire the right people is equally critical. Stu Leonard's has mastered the art of empowering its employees to be the best leaders, the best note takers, the best askers, the best listeners. How's it done? You celebrate, recognize, communicate, and you teach. Stu's overall training tab is about $1,000 per employee, four times the grocery industry average. That investment is a carefully calculated one. The result is a network of team members. Most other companies would call them employees. Team members who are unilaterally dedicated to the goal of satisfying that customer. In my opinion, success is becoming yourself at your very best. So we want everybody here to grow and to become themselves at their best. Our organization chart happens to be slightly different than that of a major corporation. A major corporation has a pyramid, a chairman at the top, and, uh, and, and the organization goes down. Sometimes it has too many levels, and, and part of American industry right now is, is rectifying that. Um, our version, or I should say Stu's version of an organization, which I adapted to very quickly because I loved it, is that the organization is inverted. The pyramid is inverted, the customer is at the top. All of us are here to do nothing more than to take care of that customer. We never say I around here, I do this or I do that. We always say we. We're all part of a team, we're all part of the same family, and we're, we're all reaching towards the goal of making the customer happy. Turnover in the supermarket industry is like 200 to 300%, but here at Stu Leonard it's only 60, because we're constantly working and communicating, which is the key word, communicating with the people to find out, are you happy? Do you like your job? Is there something we can do to make it better for you? And this way, they feel that we care about them, and they, they talk to us about their problems. We have the open door policy. They feel like they can go, go in and just talk to their manager about a problem or something that's bothering them. And in this way, they, you know, they're happier and we get, them, we get a lot more pr productivity out of the person and uh, turnover remains low. And if they are the type of person that we want, we tell them right there, you're hired. It's no long process. We say, we'd love to have you be a member of our team here. And then we set them up for our new hire orientation. Hi. How are you doing today? We'll hire maybe one out of every ten that we interview because we're so picky on attitude. Right there for you. I'd like to welcome everyone to orientation. We hope through this orientation that you're going to feel comfortable because we're going to teach you how to punch So, you know, we try to make it fun. We try to do games during it. We try to, to really get them involved and enthusiastic because that's the only way they're going to retain it. And they become members of our family, and um, that's really what it is, family. Okay. 
Since Stu Leonard's is built on teamwork, and one of the things that we do is we go over the four principles that have made Stu Leonard so successful. The first one is satisfying the customer. The second one is teamwork and how that gets it done. The third one is excellence and how we try to make it better every day. And the fourth principle is wow and how that makes it fun. And we live by that. We believe a lot in recognition, and that's like Ken Blanchard, who, who is a fella, you know, his book, One Minute Manager, the thing we love most he wrote in there is catch your people doing something right. What gets rewarded gets repeated, and you constantly, constantly reward the people here and tell them that, that they're doing a great job. And Stu always says, a pat on the back is only a few vertebrates above a kick in the pants, but it's a mile apart in the results that it brings, and it's so true. If you just constantly re reward people and catch them doing things right, they want to do it again. We're ready to do the Superstar of the Month. Here they come. Okay, thanks. Each Bye. month we go down on the floor, okay, we pick a team way. member who's done an outstanding job for the month, maybe treated the customer extra special, or, you know, has just given a, above and beyond um, what their normal job calls, calls for. And what we do is we get Wow the Cow all dressed up, we get a whole dozen balloons, and we go down the floor, they have no idea they're going to get this award, and in front of all their peers and all the other team members, we give them uh, the Superstar of the Month award. And they turn bright red, and they get so embarrassed, and they're so excited, but it's that sort of record. You know, it's funny people say it's, it's a secret, it's, it's more or less common sense. I would rather, I think it's the idea that I treat them the way, the way I like to be treated or the way I've been treated in the past. Um, it, I like people talking to me, I like people knowing I'm alive, I like people um, giving me my raises on time when I was moving up. What we try to focus on is the little stuff. The little things, the most important form of recognition is thank you, I appreciate what you did. Stu Leonard believes in promoting from within. And that if you get people believing in the philosophy, they're the best people to have working here because they're the ones who are going to be the most loyal to the company and really understand what makes the, the store a company tick. So he believes that if you get someone in as a cashier, or you get someone in as a stock person, or whatever the job may be, if you train them, and you help them become themselves at their very best, they're going to grow up a ladder. They're going to, what we, we call our ladders of success. I feel better that I've worked myself up through the ranks. I think it makes the people underneath you show there's an opportunity to work up with the ranks. Um, Stu's have never been a company that snobbery entered the thing that you needed a college education to get a certain position. They would prefer that you worked up through the ranks. Over 50% of the people that work at Stu Leonard's have moved their way into management positions. And one of the ways that, that we've helped them do this is by investing time in them, investing energy. And, and so what we do is we have sent so many people through the 14-week Dale Carnegie course. What that helps them do is build their self-esteem, really be, be themselves at their very best, learn human relations skills, learn how to listen to a customer, learn how to deal with unhappy customers. We've even had the Dale Carnegie course um, brought here, built around our STW four principles. The thing that makes Stu Leonard so great for the people is that they feel a sense of ownership. They feel that the store is theirs. They don't feel like uh, this is Stu Leonard's store. They feel like it's my store. Each week about 30 managers gather in a meeting to share each department's progress and to find out what's new at the dairy. For the first time ever we have instituted a, uh, at Stu Leonard's a profit sharing plan that I think all of you heard about. It actually started um, on Wednesday, yesterday. Uh, we're in the first week of a 13-week uh, quarter. And what I really like about it is, A, uh, it's very fair. I mean, yeah. we've had all of your inputs. We're not giving you targets that are not, they're challenging, but they're not unrealistic. And I think that's very important in setting any target. And essentially, we're going to share with all of you uh, a, a significant portion of the profits this company makes. So I think you're going to find uh, that um, the profit sharing thing will make you feel even more like an owner in the business. And I would say it's highly innovative, innovative for a business of this size. So I just want to brief you on that. One thing I want to congratulate everybody by, the green sheet right here, which Jeff prints uh, off the computer, we had a 36 percent increase in sales last week. Right. You know? The bakery had a 33 percent increase in sales last week. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason we're able to have these kind of tremendous increases in the bakery are because of uh, managers like Brenda Violet. Brenda Violet last 
one, one day last week, came in on her day off and worked through the night just to make sure to, uh, production ran smoothly. And um, I call it really going above and beyond the call of duty. Um, one thing that we've done in the produce department, uh, I'd say in the last uh, eight months, is um, we went and we changed to a better quality tomato and really tried to upgrade the business. Uh, since then, uh, sales have increased at least 40% on tomato sales. Um, we haven't had any negative notes on about the price. People don't mind paying the price for the tomato. The gross profit is, you know, about doubled. Um, as, as everybody knows this year, we opened Danbury up three weeks earlier. And that, so our sales are up 100% now over the year. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Uh, <laughs> but um, there's, uh, last year, um, the busiest week we ever had in Danbury was 249,000. That was the 4th of July. And last week we did 198,000. So that our sales are growing real fast and it looks like looks like we'll have a fantastic year up there our goal up in danbury this year is 77 sales per man hour dollars tom leonard is in charge of the new operation in danbury which will be the site of the store twice the size of the norwalk dairy 79.9 so which was great the second week we dropped down and did 64 then we went right up into the 80s we ran another ad in mid 80s and then last week we did 86.7 I wanted to correct one thing Tommy said. Uh, he's actually done better than 100% because uh, from zero to averaging 150 a week is actually infinity. 100%. Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call a sales increase. <laughs> Well, we did the turnover for March of this year compared to the turnover for March of last year. And we had 68 people leave last month of last year. And we only had 10 leave this year. So I think it was um, six people less, which was very big, thanks to Nick. Um, also, one factor, I think, contributing to that decrease is um, the communication meetings that we have monthly. Because last year we didn't have those, and this year we do have them. And I think it makes the, the management <coughs> closer to their employer and it's, it, to the employee. You know, it helps solve problems, and it really motivates them to stay and you know, have be part of Stu Leonard's. What Chris just talked about, I told her about it the other day. We have a new part-timer down in the service bar uh, named Fred Martinez. And as I told you, he's, yeah, he's, great. he's the most outgoing, friendliest person I've seen in a long time, full or part time. Right, he's great. Matter of fact, he's scary because you walk by and there's no customers, and he's, can I help you? Can I help you? <laughs> and there's nobody in front of him. <laughs> yeah. I think the way to empower people is first you have to trust them. You have to back your people up. You know, if a customer forgets their checkbook, forgets cash, you make the call. I'll back you up. You know, you use your own judgment. Things don't run perfect. There's breakdowns, there's miscommunication, there's misunderstandings that happen all the time between us. But as long as the person who's there has the right attitude to handle the customer with a smile. Yes, I'll help you. I'll jump up and down. I'll do backflips. I'll do whatever you need to make sure you leave here happy. If that's their attitude, that customer will be happy. They'll come back again. I'll spend like half my day just walking around the building. When you walk through a department, you may just say, ah, no one noticed me walking through. People notice you, believe me. Even if they're sitting there just doing their job and they don't even look up. Um, how's the demos going with the pineapples? I walk through the store, I walk through departments. You know, I just walk up, hey, what are you doing? They were, love the produce department, you know? How's everything? Hey, how you doing? Hey, you know what I just wanted to talk to you about? And you know what would be nice? I'd appreciate if you could get a, a towel and just wipe. You see how dirty this is? Yeah. If you could just, it. I'd appreciate that. Because okay, you know why? It makes the stuff look darker. Okay, how do that now? We're going to try new ideas. We're going to be flexible. We're going to grow people. And we're going to be better today than we were yesterday. That's the attitude. And I think if we all have that attitude, whether it's for the company or personally, how can you go wrong? An entrepreneur can have all the best people in the world working for him. 
enthusiastic, conscientious, and sensitive to the customer needs. As we just saw, it doesn't have to add up to a lot of dollars and cents. Contrary to popular corporate thought, it's the simple, everyday kind of things. Constantly communicating with people, recognizing their achievements, giving them a stake in the business, creating an environment for the free flow of ideas. And you've got to listen to them all the time. But the human touch is not enough. Your people systems have to be matched by your support systems. Stu Leonard recognized this almost 10 years before the rest of the grocery industry. While the major chain stores were worrying about profit margins for a whole department, Stu was tracking each individual product from the moment it entered this massive warehouse until the customer carried it out the front door. Stu Leonard's does it through a system called direct product profitability. In any given week, day, or even hour, they can tell you exactly how much of any single product has just been purchased by the customer. It's accomplished through an advanced computer system, constantly analyzing the checkout registers, which use a sophisticated scanning system. Well, it might seem like a technological frill, but it's actually the backbone of the Stu Leonard system of buying and selling. You see, Stu buys gigantic trailer loads of food, direct from the source. No middleman, no excessive markup. And these aren't your average supplier relationships either. These are carefully researched and cultivated relationships founded on products of the highest quality and suppliers of the utmost integrity. And this massive amount of product gets pushed through each register at the rate of three and one half tons in a single cashier's eight hour shift. Stu learned early on that the more you buy, the better value for a highly valued customer. Supplier relationships are very important to us. Before we begin to work with a supplier, we go visit the supplier. And we try to share our philosophy with the supplier that it's a, it's, we're going to be in a win-win situation. My theory is, and what I believe in very firmly, is um, you can't put percentages in the bank. You can only put money in the bank. Now, we are uh, a profitable business. Uh, we are not an unprofitable business. But we like to operate on very high volume. We like to uh, measure our profitability in terms of dollars, not necessarily percentages. We don't want higher gross margins here. We think we can have smaller expense percentages, though. We know we can. And so we're working hard. We're getting everybody involved in lowering those expenses. If we can buy an item for a dollar and it costs us 10 cents to put it through here and we're willing to make three cents profit, that's what the item will go out at. The other stores come up with a, with, a, with a price regardless of their cost and they'll sell at that price. If our cost goes down 10 cents, we lower our retail price 10 cents. We work extremely hard to make sure that we buy everything because of our volume at the, at the best possible value for the customer. Notice I didn't say price because there's a lower price for anything. You can buy um, a garbage and you wouldn't have to pay as much for it. So it's the, we find the best possible uh, um, value that we can possibly find for the customer. And then eliminate the middleman when we can. We don't need to deal through brokers. Uh, we deal directly with our suppliers in most cases. Suppliers are everything to a business. Um, they have to be treated like that, too. It's not that we're not going to sit down and get the best possible price we can, but um, we have to get the best product in here. And we spend a lot of time researching suppliers out. We want to go to the supplier that has the best reputation in the industry. That's why we like to buy from a person like a Frank Perdue. Because we know, I mean, when he came in the store the first time to sell us, he said, OK, uh, we'll start selling you next week. And we said, why next week? We want to start right away. And he said, yeah, but I got to check your cooler temperatures out where you're going to hold my chicken. He said, because I, I'm not going to sell you product if your temperature, your cooler temperatures are right. He said, high cooler temperatures are going to affect the quality of my product. So we said, boy, we want to buy from this guy. I mean, here's somebody who's not just concerned with what he's selling us. He just doesn't say, okay, as soon as it hits your door, baby, it's yours. You know, you own it. 
Instead, he's concerned all the way to when the customer takes it home and eats it. But uh, we get a lot of feedback from everybody. Well, see, so you're responsive to the consumer, right? Yeah, you have to be. You ought to be. Yeah. And we do, too. Yeah. 80% of all new products fail because the advertiser assumes the consumer is an idiot. And they're not an idiot. Yeah. That's a very big mistake a lot of advertisers make. You know, the, the product does not meet the promise of the advertiser. Well, if you ever want to find out, you know, how smart the customer is, you just have to stand right here where we're standing, mm -hmm. you know, on a Saturday and just ask people about chicken. I mean, they're experts on it. No matter how hard we try to put out the best product for the customer and all, we can always be as good as the supplier is. We need That's great true. suppliers, you know. Well, you do. We can't make magic. We have sure. to deal with the best. You know, the people who we have the best quality with, we've done the business for years and years and years. Like, it's like the farmers. We got 3,000 farmers who grow our chickens mm -hmm. on their own farm in their own house. And there's a world of difference. So producers that don't do a good job just don't hang yeah. around, you know. And certainly we prefer to sell to somebody like yourself. It's a good merchandiser that takes care of the product. It's, it's like night and day. It's been a great relationship, it really has. I just checked it today, it's 10 years. I was amazed it's been that long. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. Thank okay. you. I really Thank appreciate you it. It's great, great seeing you yeah, again. Good to see you. It's just great. We look for excitable people who love their product because we find that if they love their product, they're going to invest in new equipment, the latest technology. They're going to have pride in their business. Because Purdue, it, it's in their driver. It's in the uniform that they dress the driver. It's in the cleanliness of the truck when it backs in. It smells like it's been cleaned every time it goes out. The product's always nice and stacked on the truck. And the temperature's always right. I mean, it's a pleasure to unload a truck. It's like playing in a clean sandbox versus a dirty sandbox. <laughs> In a normal supermarket, the item will come from the manufacturer in the trailer, will go to a central warehouse, become unloaded and stored, will be reloaded in a store-owned trailer and delivered to several stores daily. We cut that right out, and we call that saving the middleman, which is the warehousing. We do our own buying. We don't go to brokers. We don't go to distributors. We buy direct from manufacturers in truckload quantities. Stu Leonard's gives the customer a better value by either going directly to the source or making it themselves. Milk arrives here every day, 5,000 gallons at 5 a.m. We unload the truck before 7 and we start bottling at approximately 8.30. The milk processing plant right in the store turns out the freshest possible milk at a great price, cutting out the middleman altogether. We have a, a full-blown dairy plant. We do all our own processing. We make milk. We pasteurize daily. We process approximately a gallon of milk every two seconds. We do our own cooking. We do our own baking. And we do our own wrapping. And all of that requires many machines, uh, tons of electrical support, tons of air conditioning support, and tons of storage space. We receive about 65 to 70 trucks a week here uh, at 20 tons apiece. And the customers carry that out of the store in Stu Leonard bags, which equal the weight of a loaded 747 every week. Pile them high and watch them buy. That's a Stu's greatest slogan, you know, full shells sell product. Each of these items, um, when it's scanned through our front registers, is aggregated into a weekly report, which we call the activity report. It literally shows sales by every item in our store, either by day or by the week. It shows margins, it shows activity. Our computer system in this room tracks every item through the registers as fast as we sell it. The moment it's scanned, we know the information and it's sold. We know our exact cost because all the purchasing is done in this building. 
We know our, our exact cost for putting the items through the building because payroll is in this building. And we know the cost for storage because all our utilities are in this building. So we have all of our costs right here. We have our cost accounting department. We have our controlling department. We have our financial department. And they all rely on this room for information. We actually give that department manager literally more information than any other um, uh, companies such as us would give them so they can manage their business, they can manage their margins. Boy, Mike had a great month during the month of March. I was looking at the financial statements, which I know you get every month, too. You have fantastic sales and gross margins were way up again. Yeah, well, we're trying to uh, watch the hours, keep the sales from that hour up. Should be good. And does the financial report help you a great deal in terms of looking at things like payroll, change in it sales does. compared to last year? It helps a lot. It just helps you overall, production-wise, sales per man hour, uh, customer counts, which is on that sheet also, know what to expect. So it really, it does help a lot. I guess this is still the biggest meat department east of the Mississippi. Just about. Yeah, well, that's terrific. The bottom line is that it's very important that the department manager understand the profitability of his department. He knows how to staff accordingly. Um, we feed him information in terms of when it's busy and when it isn't. He knows he doesn't have to staff on a Tuesday the way he does on a Saturday. He knows uh, he ha we have information available by hour. Our, our mainframe can tell us sales by hour. So we can, we can man uh, our cashiers properly that way, we can man uh, our departments properly that way, and, and try very hard to keep the customer happy by being staffed properly, but also to give people time off when we can afford to do it and when they would like to do it. Topped $600 an hour for the front yes. end. If you look at what Thursday, is, what do you, what do you this have? is our activity report. This okay. shows us uh, how many customers we have by hour every day. So okay. if you look at Thursday, let's take an example. Thursday, we have approximately 1,000 customers between 8 and 9, uh, 600 between 9 and 10. So what we did was, that's almost double our normal amount of customers. Mm. What we did was that we hired four more cashiers, 6 to 11, brought them in, trained them already. So right. we should be fine. Uh, if they find a product isn't selling well, I always say, it's one of several things. Either the customer plane doesn't like it, or you didn't purchase it very well, and therefore your selling price is not competitive and they won't buy it. Or maybe the product just is inc inconsistent with the, with the kind of customer that we have. There are certain things that we can't sell. This enables our managers to rotate the products, and they will um, discard products that our customers tell us they plain don't want to buy and, and replace it with other ones that they would. So it's awareness of information that leads to awareness of problems that leads to solutions. You never solve a problem if you, if you don't know it exists. We are spending money today on improving things, on changing things, on modifying things, always asking ourselves what could be better, what could we change, what could we improve, not necessarily for next week, certainly not for the financial statement this month, but maybe 10 or 15 years from now. Uh, we expect to be in business forever. And all of our thinking, everything that we do, has to be long-term, not short-term. This grocery store has a unique system in place. They've tailored a technical support system to provide up-to-the-minute, item-by-item information, which enables managers to be adaptable and flexible to customer needs and buying trends. Furthermore, it arms them with information needed to make the most efficient purchasing decisions, but not just from any supplier, just from those hand-picked suppliers who consistently provide the very best quality merchandise and do so with total integrity. Combining effective support systems with your people systems is half the battle. So what's missing, you ask? Well, who sets the tone? That's the job of an executive, a leader, a coach. And Stu Leonard is just that coach, the man who had a vision and executed that vision with the help and leadership of individuals who share his philosophy of listening to customers and giving them exactly what they want. My Older brother, Leo, taught me how to play chess when I was about 13 or 14 years old. And I got real interested in chess. I bought some books on it, and I studied, and he would beat me. And he's not the kind of a guy that would let me win. He just kept winning all the time. And I'd be starting to improve and getting better, but I had a hard job beating him. And finally, one day, I said to him, after four or five years, I said, Leo, how come I never can beat you, and you always beat me? <laughs> And he looked at me and he said, well, Stu, your problem is that you're only interested in your side of the table. He said, when you make a move, you're just interested in what you're going to do. I said, well, how do you do it? 
He said, well, what I do, he said, before I make my movie, he said, I go mentally around to your side of the table. And I look at everything from your side of the table, and then I come back, and usually I adjust what I'm going to do myself. And I tried it, and I started to win once in a while. Not very often, but once in a while. And so I applied that same concept to my business, that I'm always going to look at things from the customer side of the table, because after all, it's their money. They're the one that makes the decision where they're going to spend it. And so if I can think in terms of their interest, then I'm going to be better off. What I learned about trust from Stu the started out as a milkman milk and learned a valuable lesson from his customers. The milkman is trusted in the family. You can go and uh, go inside their homes when they go to pay you. They leave the key under the mat and say, would you put the milk in the refrigerator? And they're, they're going to, they've gone to work. Uh, when you deliver in the middle of the night, you walk through their yard and uh, there's a dog laying right on the porch, and he doesn't even bark because he knows you. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very close relationship, being a milkman. Uh, the customer and the milkman always were friends. The first dream that I had uh, was to build a little store with a little dairy plant and survive. I was in a position where the state highway had just taken our family business. My brother Jim had retired to Florida, so I was all alone. We paid off the creditors, and there was very little money left. So I just started out on my own, hoping somehow or other I could make ends meet. But an interesting thing is that even when we didn't have the wherewithal to be overly generous with a customer, we still were. We still, in other words, tried to to do the same things we do today. And I think that's what resulted in the growth of the business. If you take care of the customer, and if you treat the customer as you would a member of your family or a friend or whatever, uh, they will give you back one of, the, one of the greatest things a customer can give you, and that's loyalty. Uh, we are in the business here selling milk, and at any one given moment in our store, 99% of the people in our store are repeat customers. So our whole uh, goal is to get the customer to come back. How you doing? Hello. Mr. Leonard, Good to see you. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hey. So nice. the fact great. that it's five times easier to keep oh, a customer than to get a new one, yeah, and the fact that if you treat the customer good, they will come back, all combines to make us feel that anything we can do for the customer to make it so that she's happier because only satisfied customers come back. And uh, I know myself, I don't go back to restaurants or food stores or anything where I'm not really happy. So we just naturally do that here. Okay. How are we? Hey, Tommy! How you doing? How's everything today? Good. Good. There, there are many currencies in business. Profit is just one of them. Another one is satisfaction. Another one is happy people. When you see happy people working with you, and then you see them making the customer happy, you know, I always have a little saying that happy people equal happy customers, equal happy bankers. <laughs> Equal oh, happy yeah. owner. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Hello. How are you? Good. At Stu Leonard's, profit is a reward. It's not a right. It's not something that is the most important thing. It's going to be a, a reward. It's going to be the result. And so that when you get the customer uh, realizing that you're on their side and that you really are bending over backward to, to, to make them come back. And if they have a problem, and you might lose the profit on that whole order that one day, but so what? Because it's a lifetime, long-term outlook that you're after. I think that the, the, the secret that everybody is looking for, when I see somebody come in the store with a roll of film, and they'll, in their camera, and they'll go around taking pictures of our displays, take a picture of our salad bar, take a picture of our or meat cases or something. I always go over to them and say, hey, you're taking pictures of the wrong thing. Take the roll of film of the people that are working here. That's the secret. There's no uh, magic here. This is just a, a group of people that really care, that really believe, that really love the customer, 
that really are not worried about getting ripped off by anybody. And if they do, they look the other way and turn the other cheek. And it works like gangbusters. And it's so simple. And the bottom line is that the people that work here are the real key. And so what your job as the boss is, is to reward the people for the good job they're doing. Because they really want to do a good job. But if you don't care, and you don't pay attention to it, and you don't, you don't thank anybody for doing that extra thing, well, why should they do it? There's no incentive. And, it, and rewards are, there are many different kinds of rewards. You don't, not just money. There's appreciation. There's recognition. And I, I think that these different ways to say, I have seven different kinds of stationery that I write thank you notes on. I write a different one every time to people. It only takes a minute to say, in a, in a sense, I love you for the good job you're doing. So I think that be aware that they're watching you. And you're the leader, and you have to inspire the people. And the company is not going to be any better than you are if you're the leader. I once had a chance to have lunch with an executive of a multi-billion dollar company. And I was really thrilled because he was in a supermarket business. And I, I said to him, uh, geez, this is wonderful. I mean, how many stores do you have? And I had several hundred, you know. And he said, is there anything you want to ask me, Stu? And I said, well, matter of fact, there is. My wife always asks me. She said, why is it that the big supermarket chains build a new store and they put in 10 or 12 cash registers, but then they only open up two or three, and they have long lines of customers, and they leave the other ones empty. And I said, what's the answer to that? And he said, well, tell you the truth, Stu, he said, I don't know. He said, you have time to worry about customers all the time. But he said, I really don't have time to worry about that. I said, uh, oh, uh, how, how do you spend your time? And he got all enthused, and he said, you know, from here, he said, I'm going down to Miami, where I'm the chairman of the pallet committee, where we're, we're studying transportation of, of the products, he said, and we're trying to standardize on pallets. He said, if we can standardize, we're going to save the industry a lot of money. And I remember going home in the car, saying to my wife, I said, you know, Mayor, there's one thing little guys like us aren't going to have to worry much, as long as those big guys keep worrying about pallets instead of customers, you know. I can't emphasize enough that how people are craving to have the boss come around and say something nice about him. You know, I remember when I was a young boy in high school, I used to dig ditches for my uncle during the summer. And I can remember in that ditch, digging the ditch, and he'd come along the construction job, and he'd be busy about other things. He didn't even notice me down in the ditch. But I was thinking of him every second he was anywhere around. So I think the employee that that the people in your business are very aware of you, more than the, the CEO or the, the uh, top person might realize it. And I think that you can't fake it. It's got to be sincere. It's got to be sincere. And you can't delegate it. You have to take and have the CEO of the company has to believe it. The CEO has to want this to happen. If he's going to try to delegate that to other people, it's not going to work. And that's the hard part. You have to spend the time on it. You have to believe it, and you have to feel it, and you have to act it out. When, you, when I pick up a paper on the floor, there are people watching me. And they, they pick up papers on the floor, and so on. I think that if the, if the boss believes it and does it, then it's going to work. You never rest on your laurels. You're constantly striving to improve. You're constantly striving to please the customer, because the customer is the ultimate boss. You know, I've traveled the entire country looking at corporations that have created models of excellence in all aspects of their business. And whether you're talking to the president of an automobile company or a computer software firm, you'll hear very similar ideas about customer service. But Stu Leonard has turned that simple expression, customer service, into a passionate pursuit. At this store in Norwalk and at his second store in Danbury and with tremendous success. At the expense of sounding repetitive, it's no secret. 20 years ago, Stu Leonard was staring at bankruptcy, but instead of walking away from negative people, he ran from them, and with conviction and leadership put together a team united in a simple philosophy. If you take care of your people and you listen to your customers, how can you go wrong? 
We've seen and heard about many strategies on how to run a traditional business in a not-so-traditional business setting. And there are many of them. But there's a common thread that is weaved through the Stu Leonard fabric, and that thread is innovation. It's found in the way Stu's people handle customers, responding to them quickly and with a smile. It's found in the way Stu treats his own people, creating an environment where team members have a stake in the business. And their ideas are not only welcomed, they're highly sought. Their accomplishments are not only seen, but they're celebrated. And they're not only spoken to, but taught and communicated to on every level of the business. And they're provided with information enabling them to make decisions that directly affect the profitability of their departments. No bureaucratic red tape here. It's not just innovative management techniques like managing by appreciation or even managing by wandering around. It's management by being flexible to change, tapping ideas, and taking a risk. Above all, Stu's people are given the opportunity to grow and to realize their potential. You see, it's really pretty simple. Your people are the company. And when your people are strong, it makes the company strong. I, I would say that no matter how big your company becomes, this philosophy is possible if you can ignite the people in each location to believe in it. And I would like to invite them all to come here and see how we do it. You know, I often thought about taking a door in a building and putting a big red X on it and say, do not open the secret to this business is behind that door. But it's not a secret. Everybody thinks it's something they can't do, but it's just common sense. So the answer is to uh, always find the best value for your customer. And they will love you for it. We don't need a consultant to come in and tell us that. We, here, our customers are consultants right here. You know, that's what we love about this. You know, we got a nice rapport with them. That's, I hope we always keep that forever. The thing that's so important about the customer being uh, always right is that only happy customers come back. And if you don't have happy customers, you'll end up just having a shopper. Keep it simple. Eliminate the bureaucracy. Communicate and love people. And everything else will fall into place. It's real simple. Nothing to it. You got to do it. I mean, stop talking about it. I, it makes me mad to see people come through the store. They look through, you tell them all the stuff, and there's nothing that they didn't know. But they go out and say, wow, isn't that great? But they don't go home and do it. That's really true, you know. That really is. That's really the guts of this whole really? thing. Who's this here? Hey, hey, look at this guy. How you doing? Hello. Good to see you. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>